All right, I'm warning you, I stay on the move, okay? I'm a moving target. It keeps you awake and it keeps me going. First of all, uh, I want to say thank you. Thank you to uh, Corporal Garcia, Colonel Malone, uh, all of our organizers, David, and everyone that has played such a huge role in bringing this together because it's, it's no small feat to put an organization like this and keep bringing it together time after time. So uh, thank you for all that you do. And at the same time, I want to say thank you to our, uh, our Quantico Color Guard uh, that came out to support, as well as our museum staff. Jennifer was here a second ago, but uh, so many people come together to make something like this special. I just want to say thank you and recognize them real quick with a round of applause. Well, first of all, Quantico. Quantico, for all of us, as you know, is called the Crossroads of the Marine Corps. And there's... There... All right, tell you what, I'll do both. All right, I'll, or I'll stand in the middle, one of the two. Watch out. Okay, uh, Quantico. The uh, kind of the center of the Marine Corps, if you really look at it. So much comes through here, we call it the crossroads of the Marine Corps. We call it the crossroads because we do everything from all of the training that we organize that permeates throughout the entire Marine Corps. That's all done here. Many of the, much of the training is actually done here. Uh, so it plays a central role. It plays a central role in what we do with all of our manpower. Our manpower is all managed from Quantico. Uh, we also do all of our combat development here, and that permeates throughout all of the Marine Corps, and it all comes through this location. And that makes it a little bit special. But what really makes it special is that in 1917, what happened? Ninth Marine Regiment stood up here. And that would eventually give you your start, right? And really what would eventually bring us together tonight. So a great place and a very appropriate place to recognize what 1st Battalion, 9th Marines has done for our Corps and why it's so important to continue to recognize it. The second part is the museum here. How many have been to the museum before? I have too, a few times. And the fact is, is every time I walk in here, it blows me away. Have you had the chance to actually tour through it? Well, when you do, you're going to find it does something to you. It sucks you in. It sucks you in and surrounds you by what it is to be a Marine. It sucks you into the legacy of the Marine Corps. It recognizes and ensures that those who don't know what it is to be a Marine learn pretty fast. And for those that do know what it is to be a Marine, we recognize that it's our way of ensuring nobody ever forgets. And that's a really, really important piece because when we talk about the incredible legacy of 1-9, you talk about people like Colonel Wesley Fox, who we lost this last November. We never want to forget. And this place continues to recognize him and our three other Medal of Honor recipients, as well as all of the things that 1st Battalion, 9th Marines has done for this Marine Corps. Really, really appropriate place to, uh, to hold this gathering. But in line with not forgetting, it teaches us about our legacy, but it also ensures we don't forget those that created that legacy, us, okay? The ones that have worn the cloth or supported those who have worn the cloth. It continues to remind us about that. And I do, I understand we have several of our uh, Gold Star families here tonight. Could I get you to stand for just a second? I promise, just a second. Absolutely. Thank you. That's why this place is so important, because it reminds you that we will never forget the sacrifice that your loved ones have given for this nation, and that we will never forget you and what you've done to support those families and those memories you carry. We will never forget you. That's what this place symbolizes. It's important to us. So thank you. So... Quantico being that crossroads, it just such a, 
just a perfect setting for us to be here tonight. What I want to talk about a little bit tonight is kind of where your Marine Corps is at right now. Your Marine Corps today is at about 86,000 Marines. Kind of big. Biggest we've been in quite a while. But there's plenty of work out there for us. Because out of that 186,000 Marines, I will tell you that about 30 are deployed all over the world. That equates to well over 60,000 Marines all the time are forward deployed. Okay, they're either on Marine Expeditionary Units or they're on land someplace. They are doing our bidding all over the world. They're in places like uh, all the Pacific Islands. I mean, all over the Western Pacific, they're in Afghanistan, they're in Iraq, they're in Syria. They're doing things like combat they're in harm's way. They're doing deterrence operations to make sure that those would-be adversaries don't become our adversaries. And they also do peace operations, peacekeeping operations. Really, more than that, they actually do support operations for natural disasters and things like that throughout the particularly this time of year. They do everything, and they do it really, really well. And we've been doing it for a long time, as you well know. So there's a lot to be proud of for what your Marines are doing for today. But if you look at it, what they've been doing, they've been doing for a long time. In fact, we are now over 16 years of continuous combat operations. 16 years plus straight, no break. What does that mean to us? It means that that takes a tax on our Marines, as we've talked about a little bit in, uh, in pieces tonight already. It takes a huge tax. So folks like me, all the way up to the Commandant, spend a lot of time thinking and managing how those Marines are deployed to ensure that we take care of them and make sure they do get that break and they have the best training possible. So when they go out there, they're survivable, they're lethal, they're all the things that we need our Marines to be. We make sure we spend a lot of time and effort on them. So very important for us. What we also do is we look at the equipment that they use. Because when you're in 16, over 16 years of continuous combat operations, what happens is your equipment, because it's always forward, tends to get used up pretty fast. And so it's kind of like loans out from the bank in the form of equipment. And it keeps getting older, less functional, so we have to modernize it. And somehow we have to do that all while we're doing combat operations. And that's what we're doing now. We spend a lot of time and effort doing that, and a lot of that originates right here in Quantico. So if I was to tell you what your Marine Corps looked like in past years going into now and into the future, uh, I think you would be pretty impressed. I know I am, because I've seen it firsthand. Very fortunate to have come out of command of the 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing in uh, uh, MCS Miramar in San Diego, California, which is your largest Marine aircraft wing that supports your Marines on the ground all over the globe all the time. So I can tell you uh, that there is a lot happening in support of your Marines. But if you looked over past years and say you looked at our uh, ability on the command and control side, because you can have a lot of different capabilities, but if you don't have a way to control them and put them in the right place at the right time to produce effect, don't mean much, okay? We owe that to them. So if you were in a command operations center, whether it's way up at a expeditionary force or at a division or down, even down to the platoon level, what you would have seen early on, and really a little bit still today, but almost gone, is you would have seen Marines standing around their communication gear. You would have seen them on boards with uh, grease pencils and little stickies moving around friendly forces, enemy forces, to continually update the commander so he can make the right decisions by his Marines. What you see today, and I'm not going to get into acronym soup, but uh, systems like uh, CAC2S, which is what it is, is it's a display that is in everyone's command center that is fusing information from our ground radars, our aviation aircraft, is data linking information back and forth continuously without any inputs. And all that information is fused. So that commander is seeing near real time things happening in the battle space, whether it's in combat operations or peacetime operations. So he can make sure that your Marines are survivable and capable and are at the right place at the right time so they can produce the effects in the battle space. If you were in the ground combat element, 
places like 1st Battalion, 9th Marines. You would have that equipment in your command operations center supporting your Marines. But what you would also see is a lot of automation starting to happen. You would see a lot of robotics and things supporting your efforts. You would see indirect fires like artillery you used to see. Well, now precision artillery. And actually, some of that precision artillery can come down and loiter in an area before it selects a target that you've given it to destroy the target. Incredibly capable. And it's feeding information back and forth. It's those quadcopters and things like uh, small UAVs that are going out. So you've still got Marines on point out there in the rifle squad, and you've still got your recon Marines out there, but now you're increasingly augmenting that with things like you seeing a picture well in front of you. And so you're making yourself more survivable and more capable in the battle space. And that is out there now, today. When you used to land on the and you used to use, we're now using automated systems to pick the right places on the beach, but you're not just seeing Marines coming out of AAVs right now. You're actually seeing tracked vehicles coming out with weapon systems on board that you don't have to operate. You've already given them the instructions. We are experimenting with that right now, and that's actually happening. So we are doing a lot in moving heaven and earth to make sure that your Marines have what they need uh, out there in the battle space. So pretty impressive there. If you looked across your aviation combat elements that support your Marines on the ground, because we got to get to where they're going and we, when we get there, right? So we've had additional fixed-wing aircraft like my beloved F-18 Hornet and the AV-8B Harrier that deliver precision and precision bombs and munitions. Well, now you've got the F-35 that is being fielded right now, which is a stealth aircraft that is the most precise aircraft we've ever had before. And it actually is a flying sensor. So it goes around and starts sending pictures back to our ground Marines out there in the, in the, uh, in the battle to make sure that they have up-to-date information right now so that they can make the right decisions and their Marines are more capable because of it. If you are flying in a rotary wing squadron, it used to be if you were in the Vietnam era, you started in this H-35. Right? Great airplane. And then right after that, what was it? The CH-46, right? The tandem rotor aircraft. I don't see one out here. So we evolved in capability a little. Today what you'll see is an Osprey, an MV-22. Flies like an airplane, lands like a helicopter. It's been in combat since 2007. I've flown it. It is a phenomenal piece of gear. And what it does for you is it allows you to put your Marines in a time and place of their choosing, of your choosing, much faster than an adversary can react to you. He can't keep up with the pace of operations that you start generating. That's the kind of thinking that is going in, and that's the kind of equipment that is manning your Marine Corps right now. It is pretty impressive. And it, the list goes on. If you go on to the combat, the uh, logistics combat support side of it, what you're going to see is... Traditionally, you would have seen what we call right? You would have seen a lot of equipment going in, a lot of uh, movement required to get it in place so we can support our Marines and give them what they need. Today, what you're seeing increasingly is 3D manufacturing, additive manufacturing, 3D printing, where you can actually print a part at the location and get to that Marine right now, speeding up his tempo and making him more capable. You're also seeing those delivered by autonomous unmanned helicopters. That's happening now, and it's already happened in combat. So your Marine Corps is evolving pretty darn fast, and it's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive, except for one thing. You can have the best equipment in the world, a bunch of it. You know what it means? It means nothing without one key ingredient, you. All right, our Marines. Our Marines are what makes it happen. And that's why I mentioned the command I just came from, because I got to look in their eyes every single day. It doesn't come together without their tenacity, without their smarts, without their drive. And I got to tell you, the Marines that we have today, you would be incredibly proud of. And I know you are, because you show it every day. But I can tell you, I, they blow my socks off every single day. So... That's what it's about. 
It's about our Marines, but I'm really kind of singing to the choir, speaking to the choir, right? Because you do it every day. I know what you do. Whether it's what it, the hikes up the beast, whether it's to recognize the, uh, the scars that combat can bring, whether it's supporting those Marines through programs, getting them the resources they need, the things they need to be successful, you get it. But that's nothing new to 1-9. Because by my estimation, 1-9's been running to the sound of the guns and has been in about every war we've had in the last 100 years, straight. Pretty impressive. So what am I most impressed by? It's by you. I'm impressed by the, the reason that you continue to defy Marine, always a Marine. You never forget. And we appreciate that. We all appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you for letting me share this evening with you. You are my hero. Thank you. Simplify.